Hey, Mike, how are you? Diedrich. Uh, Hi, Diedrich, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. What's going on? Good, not much, not much. I'm excited to talk to you. I'm a big fan of yours. So. Oh, cool. How oh, nice. Thanks very much, Mike. Absolutely. Um, so let's let's talk about All Hell King Julian. Um, let's, mm-hmm. We'll start with the boring question, and then I'll get more interesting. Okay. Um, <laughs> just uh, got to get the the you know the, the nuts and bolts out of the way. Uh, tell us Absolutely. Bit about your, yeah. Um, bullet tell us points. A bit about the character and and how he fits into the show. You know. Okay, so Abner um, is like um, an outsider lemur who uh, who decides that he wants to overthrow King Julian, and uh, mm-hmm. and he runs a secret organization that is focused on getting rid of him as leader. Um, the biggest problem with this organization is that it's run by complete morons, and uh, <laughs> as as we know from our own political process, you can get it started that way, but you can't really accomplish that much. Right, right. When you tackle a character like this in a show that's you know blatantly comedic as opposed to some of the other shows that are more action adventure oriented or things like that, right. is it a different approach to the character's voicing for you as an actor? Oh yeah, definitely. You can um um you really should be broader just to fit into the the wider palette and so that people know that um uh, it's a higher level of like a farcical structure, so that they mm-hmm. they don't really let up and try to um, try to you know make too much sense of the story because often comedically, you know because they're mostly just honestly just setups for jokes. Um, you need right. to uh, you need to keep it moving along at a really brisk pace. Where if you're doing an action show, they need to buy into the action. They need to think that it's happening. So you have to right. slow it down and play it a little more real. Um, right. So that's why it's a really important that you get the tone of the show. Um, I learned that fairly early on um, with, in animation because you know you, you can't just do whatever you want, and sometimes it's hard because it's you're you know you're not around the other actors and um, right. So you're leaving a lot up to the um, uh, the dialogue uh, director. Uh, but the dialogue director of this show is uh, Colette Sunderman, and she's uh, she's really wonderful. She's worked forever, even though she's incredibly mm-hmm. young. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, she's been in Scooby, and uh, but uh, she, she's just uh, she's good. So she she puts you right in the frame of of uh, where everybody else is. But that's a good question. You're absolutely right. There is a slightly different style. Cool. And and when you. Um, when you take a role like this, because I mean, you've played at this point every kind of human, animal, and alien imaginable role, just about you know, um, <laughs> what kind of what kind of preparation do you get? Do you have visuals of the character? Is there any finished animation? How early in the process were you involved? You know, what goes into creating him? That's an, that's an excellent question. Well, obviously, um, you know, I'd seen the movie with my kids, um, mm-hmm. and then uh, I was part of uh, the series that uh, was before this, Penguins. Um, mm-hmm. So I sort of got the overall tone of it from those two things. I mean, the great thing about Madagascar is that uh, the um, you know the secondary and tertiary characters are so out there that um, you can really go as far as you as, as you want. Um, <laughs> right. But as far as um, other shows are concerned, um, you know they do generally show you like um, sometimes they show you an animatic in the case of like um, Cartoon Network, but most of the time mm-hmm. they give you like um, a a really good detailed drawing of the character. So mm-hmm. you get a sense of what they want from that based on like exaggerations, you know, and the, right. the animation style tells you a lot about mm-hmm. the overall tone that they're going for. Right. Now, you're such an experienced voice actor at this point. Does it does it take you long to find a character now or can you just kind of jump in the booth and, you know, throw on a voice and and sort of go from there? Um yeah, I'm lucky in that uh, I don't get too nailed down. I mean, one of the things that um, is sort of a trap, but you need to do it uh, when you work on camera, is kind of making up your mind before you get there. Mm-hmm. Um, when you work on camera, not so much with movies because you've got tons of time, but with television, okay. you, you sort of have to make up your mind before you go. Um, right. Because there just isn't time. You know, they shoot like 12 pages or, in the case of Veep, like 25 pages in a day. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you have to – the pace just doesn't allow you to discover a lot of stuff. But uh, the great thing about animation is you show up with like a vague idea of what you want to do. Read the whole script Mm -hmm. so that you know what everything – as I said before, uh, the overall tone is – but then just sort of show up. And then, um, yeah, I prefer to create it right there because they might have an idea that's completely different than my own. And if I've sort of made up my mind, 
then mm-hmm. it's difficult to change gears. Where if you haven't sure. and you're just sort of like, okay, let me, let's wing it and see what happens, uh, they can take you in the direction that they really want to go. Because obviously they've been with the project a really long time, and they've right. thought about it a lot, and they they hear a voice in their head, and and you if you can get somewhere close to that, then they're they're happier. The session goes better, and you and you fit in with the piece as a larger whole. Right. Now, um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the recording process on the show. I know typically for this type of show, it's it's not a full cast. It's you know it's you with the voice director, like you said. Is that how this how this has gone? And, and you know, how does that work for you? Do you have you do you like it working better solo, or do you like working with the cast when you have the opportunity? I would much prefer working with the cast all the time mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because I really love voiceover actors, um, right. especially guys like um, you know uh, uh, Danny, who's amazing, and Kevin and uh, uh, and Jeff Bennett, who are all regulars mm-hmm. on the show. Um, it's much more fun. Um, they're really fun to watch work. I mean, it's truly incredible what they can do. Right. Um, and and they're also just really fun. You joke around and it, it's delightful. I mean, you know, um, the the dirty little secret of of animation is that it just doesn't pay very much. It's just really really fun to do. Um, right. So so you know, it's like playing. It's like when you're a kid. And what initially got me into acting was that you know that I couldn't believe that somebody made a living playing all the time. And uh, right. and animation feels like that. Like uh, let 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 me do this guy, and then let me say what do I want to do this guy. You know, because you generally do like three guys a show, right? Um, and uh, and that there's that element that's really fun to it. Now the only downside to that is that sometimes it takes a while. You know, um, right. it could take an hour and a half, two hours to do a whole show, um, right. because they you know they want to fine tune the acting, or you go all the way through, and then there's rewrites or blah blah blah. So it takes a. I mean that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but if you've got other things going on, that ends up mm-hmm. being some time. Um, right. So if you have the time, it's totally awesome because you're going to have right. a great time. And uh, um, and you know it's like being in a, a an old radio play, for example. Like you know it's right. like doing that style, and uh, mm-hmm. and then it's really fun. But other times, you know, um, scheduling is a conflict, and um, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm working on camera, you know, here and there, and so um, I can't go in at the at the time that they're doing the record. Um, so right. I just end up picking up just my dialogue. The only positive to that, and it's a it's a small one, is that. Um, uh, you can do it in an incredibly short period of time. You know, right. I mean, you know, I, I did. Um, oh, I can't talk about that show. But all right, so what did I do? Um, all right, so like for example, a Phineas and Ferb that I did. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is probably about a year ago. Um, mm-hmm. I did a whole episode in five minutes. Wow. <laughs> no joke. I, I went. I, I went it. in because I knew the character. I went in. I did all the lines. I said goodbye. It took me much longer to drive there than to actually do the show. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, so that's the only upside to that because most of the right. time it's really fun to play with the actors, especially when they're so talented like Danny. Sure, sure, I can imagine. Now the the press information I've gotten so far has you as a guest star. Is this something that you think there might be room for the the role to grow to return? Are we going to see more of you on the show? Um, I'd love for the character to you know come back, and I've done other characters on the show, so I'm more right. of a recurring, I would say. Um, right, right. And uh, yeah, you know. It, it's fine. I, it, it, <laughs> I have enough work, and I'm I'm really delighted to be on whatever show I can possibly be on. Um, the great thing about uh, King Julian is that um, it's such a joke-heavy show. You know, everybody mm-hmm. gets jokes, and uh, it's fun to do in in that way. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, whatever the writers want, I'm totally at the service of the writers. So if they come up with something right. and they want the character, then that's great. Um, and they have tossed me other characters, which have been really fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a fun show to do. Sure, I can imagine. Now, you mentioned, you know, obviously that you still do find time for on-camera work as well. Is yeah. there, I'm working do on you Veep prefer today, one or example. the other? Is there something, what's that? I'm working on Veep today, by the way. Right, oh, there you go, see? Well, I'm, I hope yeah, I'm not so you mix schedule. it up, yeah. <laughs> right. Is there something you like better about voice acting versus on-camera acting, or do you have a preference between the two? Well, now this is not true with um, Veep because the cast is awesome on Veep. I mean, right. just truly incredible. Really, everybody is great. You're never stuck with any cast member, which happens all the time on other shows. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, uh, you know what? Obviously, everybody's really nice, but Julia is incredible. She's just such a nice mm-hmm. person. Um, but anyway, um, 
Uh, a lot of times, on-camera actors are less fun mm-hmm. than people probably imagine. Um, right. And the hours are really, really, really long. Um, and uh, and if you're you know kind of stuck with a person for 14 hours in a day and it drags on to five days, it starts really feeling like work. Um, right. And less like play. And uh, right. so I found in myself that I would do takes where really I just wanted to get it done. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, because I wanted to go home, see my wife, um, you know, kiss my kids goodnight. And uh, right. uh, uh, the thing with voiceover is it doesn't take much time. Um, the actors are all really fun to work with because if you're difficult, um, you know, generally you're kind of drummed out of the voiceover world. Because right. they can't see you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. right. Your negotiating tactic is nothing. You got talent, but a right. lot of people show up with talent. Uh, it's Hollywood, you know. Uh, so you really, it's so because it's like a social Darwinism in a way. You like, you know, mm. you got to be nice. Um, right. So everybody's super great, and uh, it's really fun. I mean, to go to a voiceover session is really fun. I, I can't. I can't build that up enough. It's it's okay. really genuinely fun. I mean, laughing and I just can't believe I'm getting paid to do it. That's um, awesome. Yeah. I mean, it does so, pay um, less too. It pays less than on camera. On camera work sure. because, um, you know, my face is fairly recognizable. Um, mm-hmm. If you're going to use my face, um, you're going to have to pay me more. Right. Um, you know what I mean? You're using it as a marketing uh, part of your. Part of the reason that your show is selling is that I have a marketable face. Right. Um, so, so you're going to have to pay for that. But if you're just using my voice, then you don't have to pay so much because <laughs> really I'm just going there to have a good time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I like to ask what I call the IMDb question, um, which is okay. where I like to find little oddities on IMDb and ask you about them. So um, yeah, sure. I was curious. Um, IMDb in their bio of you lists they have hey, a whole get category. Off the couch. Get off the couch. Kid or dog? <sighs> you are bad. That was bad. <laughs> I'm guessing dog. Yeah. No, my child. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my um, dog. He just <sighs> there's two of them and one of them. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's all right. Um, He's a bad boy. So, so in IMDb's um, bio of you, they have a category all to itself for of uh, actors' oh, yeah. trademarks, and your trademark oh, yeah. is listed as the husky baritone voice. And I was just curious <laughs> if you find that to be an accurate trademark for you or not. <laughs> that's funny. Husky baritone voice. Yeah. Well, I guess I do have a husky baritone voice. I never really thought about it very much. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's kept me in the chips, so I'm happy about that. Um, <laughs> right. I would say, what, what's the category again? Trademark. Trademark. I that's, would say so it was like my enormous trademark, forehead. Apparently. Yeah, I would say my enormous head. That would be my like oh, my see? trademark. Right, there you go. All right. So that's like, the IMDb like Mount Rushmore down to one head. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, yeah, but the yeah, yeah, husky baritone voice, sure. Yeah. Um, right. That's actually kind of flattering. I, I like that they oh, picked there a you good go. one. Yeah. It's better than some of the other trademarks I've seen, so that's you're, oh, is you're, that right? you're doing all right. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Where is that on the page? Because I was just there. Um, if you click on your like biography, on... if you oh. click on the link for your biography, and then you scroll down to the weird like trivia and on personal quotes and all that stuff, they have a trademark. Oh, right I haven't there. done that. Yeah, oh, okay. so that's where it is. <laughs> yeah, I was just on the page today because a fan call, uh, you know, on Twitter asked, um, what was that, the Quantum Leap episode that I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't remember the name of it. It was so long ago, but, uh, but right. I looked it up for him. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, so wrapping up on what other projects do you have coming out that, that you know fans can look forward to? Obviously, All Hail King Julian. Obviously, Veep. Is there anything else we should be on the lookout for, or, or the ear out for? I guess if you will. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there's one show I can't talk about, uh, but uh, I'm working with Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, for cool. Disney on, and um, also, you know, my other show, uh, Miles from Tomorrowland, I work with Danny on mm-hmm. that. We play a two-headed, um, um, you know, alien, uh, mm-hmm. and um, and I'm um, recurring, I guess, on um, BoJack Horseman this year, too. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of voiceover stuff uh, coming up. I'm, um, I'm, keep, I'm doing less uh, on-camera stuff uh, just because... Um, uh, frankly, I just don't feel, feel like it. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy with Veep, and uh, and I'm hoping for a, a good pilot season. And you don't want to 
you don't want to make yourself too available. You right. know what I mean? Uh, sure. So that, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to pilot season. I'm hoping that um, that I get a pilot this year. And, uh, you know, I'm just, just shaking my moneymaker every day. <laughs> there you go. Shaking your husky baritone voice. That's shaking in your, my in your head. baritone voice. <laughs> it is kind of husky. Awesome. I never thought about yeah. it that way. <laughs> I have the same well, voice could, as uh, my brothers, though. My brothers and I have exactly the same voice. Really? Yeah, it's kind of freaky. Uh, John and Christopher okay. have exactly the same voice, and uh, when I hear um, them on like my you know voicemail or something, it, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, I was very lucky to inherit it. It doesn't have. I don't know, it's sort of weird when you think about genetics because it, it's like you don't feel like you have any control over it. No, no, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it seems to have done very well for you, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, so far so good. So far so good. All right, well, Diedrich, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. Today. Hey, Mike, really this is a real pleasure. It. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I have All to right, say, we'll you know, um, you, you said like you were going to warm up and get more interesting questions. Your second question was was interesting. So well, you I, have well, one thank boring you. question. <laughs> I, I try. I try very hard to have interesting questions, you know, but I always like to try and get that, you know, for people who don't know the project, you know, what's – What's the deal? Question, but then yeah, I was afraid we're going to be like, and the studio oh, wants you to plug the show and get in all the bullet points that they want and all right, that. Right, you stuff. know. So, so, yeah. So I just like to preface, yeah. let you know that I'm not going to, you know, hopefully I won't lead you down the path of, you know, another boring interview. So, <laughs> but thank you well, for the compliment. I really appreciate it. it.